Hello and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new to my channel, welcome! <laughs> Um, if you've been scrapbooking as long as I have, a lot of times you're looking for inspiration for page layout designs. So for this next little mini-series, I am going to be having a look at quilt patterns and taking the inspiration that these lovely quilters have and incorporating them into the scrapbook world. I'll show you how to look at a quilt pattern sketch, decipher it, and transfer it to your scrapbooks. So once you've seen the technique on how to decipher your quilting sketches, you can go on and do a whole bunch yourself, or you can just pick up my little series as we go along and see how I do each little one and copy mine. So I hope you enjoy the series. Let's start with this easy quilt pattern and we're going to look at it three different ways. So let's say that this square that the quilter is going to make is going to be a 12 by 12 square to put it into scrapbook world. And looking at this pattern, you can see that I have four columns. So automatically my eye would say that I'm going need three inch strips. So I'm going to go four strips by three inches each okay and if I look at these patterns again they're going to be end up being cut into squares so if I were a quilter I would say for every two half triangles it will equal one square so I'm going to say as a quilter I would need one two three four five six seven eight squares so I would need eight squares, three by three in white, right? And with this pattern again, I'm going to take one, two, three, four of the squares, and I'm going to take four of them cut in half. And that will cover all my white. For my next color, my color one, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, four, three by three squares, and I'm going to cut them all in half. And then color two will be the same as color one. Right now, if you're a scrapbooker and you're working on a solid white piece of paper as a background, you don't need to cut any of the white squares unless you want to bring in a third shade on a different color background. But if I were doing that, I would just take whatever my base shade is and lie it down. So basically, if I were a scrapbooker, I would need one strip of pattern paper. So let me go to, I'm now a scrapbooker. I'm going one strip. Three by 12, right? In pattern one. And then I'm going to take that strip. I'm going to cut four three by three squares. And then I'm going to cut my squares diagonally, <laughs> right? And I'm going to do the same thing again for pattern two. And then I'm just going to mimic the pattern you see here on the page. Easy enough. An advanced scrapbooker would look at this page. And if you know how to cut your parallelograms, using your trimmer with your 45 degree angle marker, you would be doing the following thing. I would want to know, in order to cut these perfect parallelograms, I'd want to know the width of this um, strip here to do my quick principle math that I'm going to show you. 
So this is a your two triangles that I was talking about, major three by three square. So I'm going to put triangle number one going down here because this page isn't a size. And I'm going to put triangle two going up here like so as per the diagram. And then I'm going to take my ruler. Let's put these right, rotate them just for the fun of it. Put them vertically. So these are my two pieces. I'm rotating them. And I want to know what the distance is across this strip. So if I take my zero centering ruler, it's saying to cut them at two and a quarter inches. So now as a advanced scrapper, scrapbooker that knows a little bit of math, you're going to take strips of paper, two and one quarter inches in width, and create your patterns. So I'll show you how to do that. And you'll do that twice with your two strips. So for the ease of my example, I'm just gonna use a double-sided paper and I'm gonna cut all my strips the same and then I will just rotate them as I go. So first we're gonna start with our two and a quarter Get our last strip so we have all our strips done and now we're going to take our piece of paper if it's two and a quarter inches you're going to take it in and slide it along your 45 degree line to your point point. and you can check with your tip rule that i'm on the point there and coming off so i'm going to cut my first one and whatever my width was, so on this one here, I was cutting at two and one quarter. I am now going to rotate my page around and go to the two and a quarter inch line here. And I'm going to cut again. And then I'm going to slide up. So you can see by my diagram, I'm getting three cuts out of one 12 inch strip of paper. So one, two, three, it's going to take me one, two and a bit strips of paper. Well, basically three strips of paper to get my diagram down. So I'll finish all my cutting and we'll go back to assembly. For assembly purposes, I'm gonna use a white sheet of paper so it's easier for you to see. So basically we're going one, two, rotate, three, that looks so pretty, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. I'm going to rotate that one there and there. And there is my basic pattern that I just have to glue on my page. You can work with your zero centering ruler to ensure that your first layout is six inches above the page and again in this direction to make sure you're centered on the page this way. But again, because you are a scrapbooker and you may want to change this to a double page spread, there's a lot of other variations you can do. I can take these three and push them to the end of that page and then add these three all the way over here on the end of this page. And then work with my photos down the middle. It's a lovely grid. I can go one top, one side, top, bottom. I can go both on the inside with my pattern going out or vice versa. I can rotate them so that initial pattern is together but it is 
in the center of my page with my photos on the outside. Lots of fun. So don't forget, as a scrapbooker, once you know this technique for creating your own parallelograms, you don't have to make it this size for your page. You can just change the width of your strip and rotate it and do all your trimming and do some other variations. So don't forget, so for your parallelogram, whatever the width of your strip is, you're going to trim it along the 45 degrees to get your angle. Then you're going to rotate it and place that new edge you've created at the width mark. And then you'll just keep trimming again to make your eight pieces. So here's another example. I used a one inch strip and I created that small quilt pattern that will make it just a beautiful little accent up in the corner. And again, I can split this one up across two pages. Your one inch width on your strip I got seven pieces out of my 12 inch strip before I had to start in the next one. So your, the number of pieces you get out of a strip will vary on the length of each piece as you're cutting it. I really want to send out a special thanks to the ladies in my photo recall virtual crop group that uh, experimented with me and we had some lots of fun with this idea. And uh, here are some examples of pages that were created. I hope you had fun with this lesson. I hope you realize that it's so much easier to work with paper than it is with a needle and thread. And we'll catch you in the next go round. If you want to get notifications for my videos as I post them, hit the notification button or subscribe to my channel and you won't miss a thing. All right, we'll talk to you soon.